What's up, YouTube? Marvin Four here with another Great American Survival, and in this week's episode, we're going to be talking all about our Ascend 12T. Now, this is an awesome sit on top kayak coming from Bass Pro and Cabela's. Guys, this is a 12 foot fishing kayak and comes in around $600. Stick with us, I'll tell you all about it. This video is intended for all ages. we're going to talk about the very front of the boat. Up here on the bow, we have a nice little um, rubberized uh, grab handle. Uh, we have the front bow area, which is a very nice cargo area. One thing I didn't like about it is all the bungees are all anchored down. There are no J hooks, so you can't stretch it out and really secure your bag like if you're going camping, put all your gear in there, but it's not really a big deal. You can still do it. You just can't use these bungees. You can stretch these over like jackets, maybe a dry sack, things like that, or a fish bag or a cooler. It'll work for that. But uh, the area is huge. I mean, it's got, it's about 22, I think it's 22 uh, inches across there and 24 across this. I mean, just nice. It's a nice big front bow area. Uh, I really like it because I can put a couple of those little uh, non-skit mats and my dog can ride up front. Um, he's not very big, but as he gets bigger, that's going to be an issue. There he is. Hey, Parker. Come here, big boy. My dog just happens to be coming and running down the hill. Hey, big guy. Hey, where you been? Uh -huh. Good boy. Now, the one thing I did like is that the next air, the little next cargo area is recessed so it's down a little bit so it helps drain everything down uh, the one thing i didn't like about our 10t is that certain parts were countersunk and it would make it where water wanted to stay up there uh, this everything's going to kind of funnel down especially when you're paddling and everything's going to drain back uh, you do have some very nice uh, very adjustable footrests uh, which i don't think anybody's gonna i mean this mine are usually right in here for me i'm six foot so got plenty of room for adjustment for other people and it's just a much much wider area the one thing I liked when I was out paddling is it didn't take on as much water one it does it is a lot more buoyant it is 12 foot instead of a 10 foot like my tenti and this is also rated for 350 pounds as opposed to the other is 250 so very nice um, I love the, the no skid little uh, padded footrest and um, all the traction pads, the traction pads and the scubber holes work great for making sure that you're not gonna slip, especially if you're barefoot or uh, just, it's not gonna make a lot of noise when you're, if, when you're standing up and you're fishing. Uh, the next thing you're gonna notice, this is a, the front paddle mount. This is for you to put your paddle across if you want. There's also gonna be a paddle holder, but we'll get to that in a second. And it, um, it also does have a very nice storage area. Uh, this one is about 14 inches across, not the biggest area, I'll say. Um, I would have liked them to have an insert, so when we go to put stuff in there, it's not all just going to slide in, because it goes that way a ways. So yes, you could put some smaller stuff, or put it in dry bags and slide it forward. I would advise attaching some type of cordage, just to make it easier to reach. You can pretty much reach your arm just about to the very front of the boat. You know, that's not really an issue. But nice gaskets, nice and, you know, just to help keep the water out, you know, nice. Also, you do have the stock little, uh, little it's a, probably a four inch, uh, little spiraled uh, removable one. We'll go back to here. On both sides of the boat, you're going to have these 16 inch gear tracks. They're metal, that helps. I like that. Um, we do have scubber holes. We have six total, two in the rear tank well and four in the front cargo hatch area up here. Uh, you do have a couple of nice little tray areas. You also have a big water bottle for like Nalgene's. It works great. And on the other side, we have a paddle holder. Honestly, it's kind of cheesy. It's just kind of a very flimsy plastic, but they didn't put one on at all. I would have just liked them to have a J-hook and a little bungee. That would have been fine. If you're going to do that, make sure that when you're setting your stuff up, put all your stuff on one side to make it where you can still get in your boat. Now, the one thing I did like about this boat, as opposed to the 10T I have, is there is no internal handle, uh, which does make it easier when you're going to get back in the boat. If you fall out, it makes it easier to get back in, but without one, you're just gonna have a little bit more issue 
uh, make it a little harder for yourself. But the one thing that this one has that the other didn't is the seat is attached. Now on the 12T, this rear area is in a, kind of, the seat is in a rear track, uh, slide track. It's got three presets, three different grooves to move it forward, back, just like that. See how it's got, let me see if I can get it up close enough for you. See this little square little slide? I would have liked this to have been metal, but it's plastic and the rail, tra um, the track is metal. The seat is their new padded seat, much more comfortable than their old ones. Very nice. But this right here works great. Uh, I like that because the other ones didn't have anything to hold them in. So this is not just going to fall out. Even if it's upside down, it doesn't come out of the track. You can always attach something, a simple bungee or a J-hook here and run, to, run a cord over it if you wanted to just keep it from going anywhere. And just like I stated about the front, the whole area is beveled. So everything's going to help drain water out. Being this area right here has these little, the little grooves for your seat. This area helps drain everything out because water's going to get in your boat. A lot of people I see on forums complain about these boats taking on water. All sit on top kayaks take on water. Uh, my Jackson Cusa is no different. I get a lot of water in it, but it drains itself out. That's why you want a sit on top kayak. A sit on top kayak as opposed to a sit in kayak. A sit in kayak turns into a bathtub when it's flipped. You know? Now we move back to the rear hatch area. Now, this is the rear tank well. This is where your car, uh, fishing crate is going to go to make it where when you're in your seat, you can just reach back and grab your stuff. If you're going to run a trolling motor, you're probably going to put your battery back in here, somewhere like that. I've seen people put them in um, Plano boxes and put them underneath and then put their crate right on top. That way they're not losing space. That is, if I was going to run one, that's probably what I'd do. That way I don't lose any more staging areas. You've got these wonderful D-rings that are metal, which allow you to tie your fishing crate down. And you do have two rear-facing flush-mounted rod holders that do have um, leash eyelets, which make it where you can attach little bungees to your fishing rods. So if you flip, you're not going to lose your fishing rods. Very nice. The, now the rear tank well has, just like the front, has these uh, smooth-mounted bungees that are just kind of locked in. They're all bolted down. They have these mounts. There's no removable J-hook where you can just pull it out and loop everything over. I would have liked that. I'll probably do a modification to this. I'll probably install a J-hook over here on the side or something like that. I don't know what I'll do yet. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, the rear area, I like it. I like, the, I like the way it's all beveled in and I love the fact that the ascents are very flush. All the way down the top you'll see that they're very smooth, which makes it where when you're putting it on a roof rack or sliding in the back of your truck and you flip it upside down, it's going to slide easier. You're not going to get caught on 900 different things as long as you don't have any accessories mounted on your tracks. That's the best thing about this. I really like the way that they made these very sleek and very ergonomic. At the very rear of the boat, you have your screw-in watertight drain plug. comes in very handy. Your, water, your boat will take on water at some point. Some of it will go in just from being out in the rain. You never know. And you have another rear uh, grab handle, which are very secure and very e very comfortable to grab. I like them. Um, I'm, I haven't had any reason to replace any of them on any of the scents. Then they've all held up pretty well. I'm going to flip the boat over and show you the bottom. So the bottom of the boat is very nice. Now this right here, the keel and everything, is what's going to make your boat track. This thing is very well done. I like the keel. I would have liked it. Being it's 12 foot, it's not gonna have a lot of rocker. Rocker is the curve that goes down the length of your boat. It's not gonna have a lot of that. It's being it's 12 foot, it's gonna, but it's gonna, that makes it track that much nicer. When you're going across water and going straight, yes, we do have some warpage across the bottom. It is um, August here in Georgia. And as you see, um, that's just going to happen. That's just dirt. Um, you're going to get warpage. It's not a lot. Uh, a lot of that is just going to come back. Um, ours has been stored right side up, so things like that are going to happen. But it's been a great boat. I have no issues with this. All this is normal. If I showed you the bottom of my Kusa, you'd be blown away. I do wish on the very back of this they had installed some type of skid plate or something a little more durable back here for all this. To make it where when you when you drag it you're gonna accidentally drag it something's gonna happen you're gonna have your kids with you and they're gonna drag it 
and it's gonna grind the bottom right off of it. They're not the most thick plastic um, kayaks, but they are roto molded and they're easy to repair. You can repair them with a heating uh, a torch and a screwdriver if you ever rupture one, just to glue it, just to get it where it's watertight again so you can get home, things like that. That's one thing I like about it. Um, the plastic, you can get it from like a five gallon bucket, things like that. Uh, it's pretty easy. I've had to do it before, not in one of these, but I've had to do it before we had a canoe and we had it hit a rock and punched a hole in it. And I had to heat up a knife in a fire and melt the bottom of the boat. Things happen. So as you see, this is a very budget friendly kayak. 12 feet, weighs um, just over 75 pounds. I think it's 78, 77, 78, something like that, but it's 12 feet long. It's a very comfortable kayak, very easy to manage, very easy to load one, but with just one person. Uh, a few things I'd change, but that's about it, guys. This thing's been a lot of fun. For the price tag and what it costs, it is a great entry level kayak for getting people started on kayak fishing. Because a lot of people are gonna try this out and this is not for you. It's a very physical activity. I see a lot of people that are getting out of that and putting trolling motors and things like that. That's just not me. I'd rather just paddle. I like to paddle. I like the physical activity. It helps me stay in shape. Uh, I have a lot of fun with it. I've had both my boys, my, I have a 19 year old and a 10 year old and they have both grown up in a kayak. My youngest is now paddle boarding and having a lot of fun doing that. But you have no idea the memories you can create on a kayak with your family. So much fun. So many places you get to go that bass boats and things like that can't go. Uh, this boat right here, like I said, it's got a great, very comfortable seat. And if you're going to be doing this, the first thing I say before you even leave the store is make sure you have a personal flotation device. Don't hit the water without a life jacket especially if you've never done this before. Now, if you're going out and doing some recreational stuff where you're planning on swimming, still keep your life jacket on you or a throw cushion, something that's gonna make it where if something happens, some type of an emergency, because I swim out of mine. Uh, we go out and we won't take any fishing rods or anything like that and we'll go offshore and we'll anchor up and we'll just get off and swim and have a good time and let our boats just float there. And we're swimming in the lake because that's what we like to do. I hope you guys take this chance to get out there and have fun with your friends and family. You'll have it's no idea the memories you'll create. I hope you guys, well, now my dog's even showing you. My dog loves it, uh, both our dogs. Um, if you have any questions, shoot them down below in the comments. We'd love to hear from you guys. Um, like I said, I've been doing this for over 30 years and um, I've had a lot of fun doing it. I will put a link down below to Bass Pro and Cabela's if you wanna look at one of these things. Right now, they're really hard to get a hold of. Uh, we've had this one for a few, um, I don't know, probably a month and uh, it's been great. I mean, really like it. I like the size of it better than the 10T, and I like the more comfort value and how much more, how much less it takes on in water, and it's just a lot more stable. It's a better boat for me. I'm six foot tall and just under 200 pounds, and it's great. I like it. If you'd like, please make sure, you guys, if you're new to our channel, hit the subscribe button. Guys, give it the old thumbs up. We'd love to hear from you guys, and make sure you go over and check us out. We're on social media, we're on Facebook, and on Instagram, and guys, Make sure you take time this week to get outdoors. Enjoy yourself, enjoy nature, be prepared, and stay safe. God bless, guys. We'll see you soon. Back up. <laughs> That's funny, dude.